Hi, now here's a good example for you to try on Vectus. It brings out a lot of the basic features that you're going to meet. And what we've got here is this figure where we're told that O to P equals the vector A, O to A is 3A, O to B is the vector B, and the point M is the midpoint of AB. So, first of all, what we've got to do is express B to P and A to B in terms of A's and B's. So let's start then with part A. So first of all, B to P. Going from B to P is exactly the same as going B to O, which is minus B, followed by O to P, which is A. So we've got minus B plus A, although you might prefer to write it the other way around as A minus B, but either way would do. Now we've got A to B in terms of A's and B's. So A to B coming from here to here. Well if we're going from A to B we can go from A to O followed by O to B. So A to O is going to be minus 3A because we're told that O to A is 3A and we're doing the reverse direction. So minus 3A followed by or plus O to B which is B. So minus 3A plus B or B minus 3A. Leave it up to you, whatever you want to put down. Now we can come on to part B. So we've got to express m to b, m to b in terms of the vectors a and b. Now we're told that m is the midpoint of a b, so therefore m to b must be half of a to b. So let's just put that in as half a to b. But if we've got to give it in terms of A's and B's, then I need to multiply this by the scalar a half. So if we do that, we're going to get minus 3 over 2 A, or minus 1 and a half A, but I prefer to leave it like that, plus a half B. And there you go. And what about C now? Let's try that one. Let's put C here. If x lies on BP produced, so that B to x equals K times B to P, express M to x in terms of A, B and K. So, we've got M to x. How are we going to get from M to x? Well, it's got to be built up from previous results. And we found out m to b just a moment ago. So it looks like we should use that. Going from m to x is the same as going from m to b, followed by, so in other words, plus, we're down here, and it's got to be b to x. So we we'll just put that in, followed by, or plus b to x. Now we know what m to b is, we just worked it out. It was this vector here. So we can put that in as being minus 3 over 2a plus a half b. But what about b to x? Well, we're told that b to x equals k times b to p. And we know that b to p was a minus b. So we can write this as k times b to p, k times, in other words, a minus b. Now you could leave the answer like this, but when you get answers with a's and b's in several terms, it's much better to group them together. So what I would do is group together the a's, and we've got ka here, minus 3 over 2a. So I'm going to put that in brackets as k minus 3 over 2, and put the a at the end. And when it comes to the b's, we've got a half b minus 
kb. So we can say plus and put that in brackets as a half minus k and then the b. And so we've got two terms, one term in a, one term in b. A lot nicer than just leaving it like this. And as you'll see in the next stage, this is also far more useful to have it looking like this. So this last stage then, part e, what have we got here? Well, we've got to find the value of k if mx is parallel to bo. mx is parallel to bo. What does that mean? Well, we know that b to o, let's just write it in, is the vector negative b. So we know that if m to x is parallel to b to o, they should be in the same ratio. But I also notice that since b to o just consists of the vector in terms of b, no a's, then this vector must have no a's in it. It's just got to be something b. So that means that the k minus 3 over 2 must be 0 so that we've just got m to x in terms of the vector b. So because since bo equals minus b, we can say that k minus 3 over 2 should equal 0, which leads to k equaling 3 over 2. So that's our answer then for the value of k. It's well worth noting, not that we're asked for it, but it's well worth noting that if k does equal 3 over 2 and we put it into here for what the vector m to x is, this comes to 0a, no a's as we want it. But here we've got half minus 3 over 2, which gives us minus 1. So m to x turns out to be minus 1b or minus b, exactly the same as b to o. So it's telling us that it's exactly the same length as b to o. OK, well, I hope you've gained something from that example. And that brings us now to the end of this one.